Hebrews chapter 10. And Hebrews is showing you comparison, showing you how much better this testament is. And there's an Old Testament, and there's it, that Old Testament had sacrifices, it had a priesthood, it had this religion to it. And he's showing you here in the book of Hebrews, you got something better than that. So he says in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 3, uh, well, start in verse 1. For the law, the Old Testament law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of those of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Now there's a Catholic right there. He's living in the wrong testament. You know what we did as Catholics? Every Saturday we'd go to confession and we'd say, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. These are my sins. And then tell him my sins. And it come out of that confessional, he'd say, here's the penances you do and say these so many Hail Marys, so many Our Fathers and, and all that. And I'd get over in that, there and kneel down and pray those, repeat those things, Hail Mary and all that. And I'd get up and I'd say, good, I'm taken care of for now. And I remember as a little boy going home with my brother and saying, wouldn't it be good to get hit by a car if, I mean, if we have to get killed, it'd now be the time. Because <laughs> we just confessed it all. Stealing that ring ding I shouldn't have taken from my brother and all that stuff, it's all confessed now. <laughs> I'm clean. <laughs> now would be the time to get killed by a car. <laughs> really, that's how you thought. That's how I thought. <laughs> but not, not come Monday or Tuesday. Because you started adding up some more sins. <laughs> and what'd you do? The next Saturday you went back with a load of sins to get rid of. And you don't have it continually. You have to keep going back and keep going back and keep going back. And you're supposed to believe you're getting cleaned. And this is showing in the Old Testament, they were not getting cleared away. Those sacrifices couldn't make the comers there unto perfect, is what he said. Verse 2, For then would they not have ceased to be offered? If all you had to do is bring this lamb one time and say, Okay, I'm a sinner. I've done wrong. Slit the throat of this lamb and kill it. And that's the last time I do it. Why do you have to keep coming back? Because these sacrifices can never take away sins. Verse 2, For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshipers, once purged, should have had no more conscience of sins. Now that's an exact description of what I was doing. I thought, good, I'm purged now. Now I shouldn't have to worry about it anymore. But I got more sins coming. Now what do I do? I got to go back again. Verse 3, but in those sacrifices, notice the plural, sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. And the book of Exodus says, God could forgive sins and iniquity and transgressions, but it would not clear the guilty. They couldn't be cleared. In the Old Testament, those sins could not be washed away and cleared by these sacrifices, plural. Verse 4, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Now, they could be forgiven, but they weren't taken away. They were still held in charge against that person. Verse 5, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldst not, but a body hast thou prepared me. So Jesus Christ comes into the world, according to Galatians, at a, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman. So he's, he's given a body. What's that body for? To offer it up as a single sacrifice, the only sacrifice God will take. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. That's Jesus Christ talking. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldst not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law, then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. So Romans 10 says Christ is the end of the law. So he, he is establishing by his offering the whole thing. He's going to take care of all those Old Testament sins with his sacrifice, single sacrifice. He's going to clear away those sins. That's why those Old Testament saved people went down into the heart of the earth to wait because they weren't cleared. All right, verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Amen. There's salvation right there. 
I got saved 27 years ago, and you know what happened? All my sins were taken care of. You say, what about the ones you're going to commit next year? They're taken care of. How? One sacrifice takes care of all of them. Took care of the 20-something years behind me and whatever I got in front of me. All taken care of by his sacrifice once. Verse 11, and every priest... Now, here's, here's a Roman Catholic priest. Standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. He said, I don't think you should be talking about the Roman Catholic Church like that and talk against someone's religion. The Bible just did. The Bible just said that priest standing there saying this is the body of Christ and offering the same sacrifices over and over and over again said it can never take away sins. So you don't need that little wafer or that little jug of wine. It cannot take away sins. Why? Because Jesus Christ isn't in a box for you to take out on Sunday morning and sacrifice again and then put them back in the box and you go out the building and leave them back in the box. That's a real convenient religion, you know that? Now, uh, verse 12. But this man, in comparison to those sacrifices, plural, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Now, Jesus Christ offers his one sacrifice for sins the plural is sins, the singular is sacrifice. There's one thing God is looking for to pay for your sins, and you don't have it to offer them. Amen. Jesus Christ offered it in your place. So you, what you need is a substitution. You come to Him unjust, and you say, I want to be made just, and I can't do it. So I'll take the sacrifice, Jesus Christ, by faith. That's what God's looking for, faith. By faith, I'll take the sacrifice He made in my place, and I'm going to trust that for my salvation. That's it. Just Him. And you know what God will do? He'll take away all your sins. You say, I don't believe it could be that easy. Well, that's salvation. And that's what is required of you to believe that. And it's, it's free country. You can go and do what you want. You can go and follow that priest. But according to that book, if you believe that book's right, that said that priest offering those sacrifices daily can never take away sins. I was an altar boy every 6 o'clock every morning all through Lent went, went that thing. Every day that sacrifice being offered. 6 o'clock every morning. That priest taking that wine and that, that uh, wafer every day being offered. Daily sacrifice can never take away sins. Now that's not, a, that's not somebody else's religion. That's not a Baptist idea that I, I just read the Bible. The Bible says you cannot get your sins taken away by those sacrifices. I'm here to give you the truth and tell you how your sins can be taken away. How you do it? By one sacrifice. Verse 14, For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. You want to get saved? You want your sins taken away? You want peace with God, knowing he's your father and it's all right? Receive Jesus Christ's sacrifice. And then and God will be satisfied. You say, well, I'm not going to do it. Okay, then God's not satisfied. Offer up something else, God will reject it. And God won't be satisfied with anything you or I have to offer. He's looking for that payment that was made on Calvary. And if you don't have that, you're out. But I'll, i got to warn you about this. Your sins must be paid for. Now, you want to pay for them, that's your choice. You want to try and show you're tough? Then you go burn in a lake of fire forever and have your sins eternally purged forever while you stay in that eternal fire. You can do that if you want, but that's pretty foolish. If I had a card in my pocket right now, and it's a gas card for any gas station you want to go to, every time you want to fill up for the rest of your life, I've paid for it. And every time you put that card in the thing, a receipt comes out, the bill comes to me for the rest of your life. You take it. Amen. No strings. I don't care where you go. I'm not even. Gonna, I'm never going to see you again. Just go do what you want with it. I don't care if your friends use it. Nothing. Just you going to take it? Amen. No, I'll pay my own gas money. Well, it's your choice. But you know what the world would say? You're a fool. 
Why are you going to pay for something you don't have to pay for? You say, because I'm going to prove that's the problem. You think you're going to prove God's wrong and you're right. Now, Jesus Christ has paid for your sins. Why are you going to pay for them yourself? All you have to do is take that sacrifice. All right, we'll close there and take a few-minute break there.